right, okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Am I being heard? Go ahead and type in the chat. There won't be any face cam today because I'm going to be um, doing traditional as well as digital uh, and I only have one camera so <laughs> I'm just going to be sticking with that. Okay. It's weird, it's gonna be my first time actually doing uh, edu educational type stream. So I'll just do the last of the shout outs, the marketing, and then we'll get going. Kind of nervous about this one I'm not gonna lie and I'm not sure why all right let's get started welcome again to weekly live streams uh, I'm sorry it didn't happen yesterday uh, I was uh, I was pretty busy yesterday and I ended up falling sick, but we're good now, we're getting started. Okay, so, you're gonna learn some stuff today. I wanted to do a stream just about the, the basics, some of the basics and fundamentals of drawing. I won't be able to cover nearly all of them, uh, unfortunately, because there really is an awful lot, but I thought these would be some good ones to start with. So the very first thing to be learning, if you, and like this is kind of aimed towards someone who's never really drawn before. I don't, you know, expect anyone coming into this to have, you know, a particularly strong level of drawing. It's just like, if you can draw something roughly resembling a circle, this is the stream for you. So first things we're going to be talking about are shapes and forms, followed by lighting and values. So I'm just going to get rid of that list. And I prepared, oh God, I actually got organized and prepared some learning material today for this. So things to know, first of all, about shapes and forms is that roughly speaking, Shapes are 2D and forms are 3D or at least have the appearance of 3D um, and you'll and you create fo forms from shapes using things like lighting and and uh, perspective and value. So there are four basic shapes, those being circle, square, rectangle and triangle probably something we all learned in school in art class I wouldn't know I don't remember I actually wasn't that good at art in school I enjoyed it but I wasn't very good so you know I'd still somewhat call myself a beginner uh, in the art world so really everything that you ever draw can be broken down into 
some variant of these four shapes. And then when you take these shapes and turn them into 3D looking forms, they look something like this. So I painted up these earlier. They're a little bit rough. I don't like the way this cone looks, but circle, when, when a circle becomes a form, it's a sphere. Square becomes a cube. Rectangle becomes a cylinder and triangle becomes a cone. And really, I, I'm yet to come across some, something that I've attempted to draw that, has, that I haven't been able to break down into these four basic forms. Um, possibly some parts of human anatomy, but if you just break it down small enough and keep on fractionating it, um, it, it just becomes simpler and simpler. And we'll be doing, uh, we'll be showing an example of that in a little bit. Sorry, I'm very thirsty. I keep taking drinks of water. Okay, and the thing, and next I said we were moving on to lighting and values, and you can really see um, how that comes into play with these kinds of shapes. Um, is that the thing that makes them look 3D is the fact that they have light applied to them in different areas and in different values. Uh, now light can be kind of <clears throat> can be kind of a tricky thing to to play around with and um, because it's very much dependent on what on the thing that you're drawing what the material is made of so, like obviously something like metal is going to be more reflective than wood so that's going so you're going to have more light coming off of that and also it 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 can depend on whether it's wet or dry what type of light is hitting it um how much light is hitting it so like everything can look radically different uh depending on the different lighting scenarios now the way I painted these up in digital wouldn't really apply to traditional. So um, just to, to show as a quick example of how I actually painted these. So we'll do a, a quick demonstration here. We'll just take, so the way I painted it in digital is I just take a fill in circle like that, a lock transparent pixels and then I pick a soft edge brush and I just slowly hang on. I don't want that to have texture there we go and you're just slowly b building up the values like this and you just slowly and you keep your brush size going smaller and smaller and you just slowly build up and up and up until you go to white where you just add like a tiny little highlight like that. Now that's a, a pretty good way to start, but there's one thing that's missing that a lot of people tend to miss. So if I go back to these forms, if you notice if the difference between uh, this sphere and this one here is that there's actually some light on this side of it as well, which obviously there isn't light coming from that side. The light is obviously coming from where the highlight is reflecting it. But because it's sitting on a surface, um, there will be a certain amount of light that bounces back up onto the bottom of the sphere from that surface. So we call that bounce lighting. So typically, so if so the way it would happen is so like let's draw a little light here so oops just go down there so let's say this is your light and you have light shining down on it some of the light is going to be coming down here onto the surface and it's going to bounce back up underneath into the sphere. So you do want to add a certain amount 
of bounce lighting. Not a whole lot, but again, that can be dependent on what the material of the surface the sphere is sitting on is. So if it's if the sphere is sitting on a on a wet or reflective surface, there's going to be more bounce lighting coming up at the bottom of the sphere than there would otherwise be if it's just sitting on, say, uh, a wooden table. So we'll just get rid of those. Um, and one of the key differences between drawing traditionally and digitally is that um, in digital, you're working from dark to light most of the time. Um, so you, you start with a really, really dark base and you're slowly building up towards your highlight. But if you're doing it traditionally, most of the time, so say you're drawing with like pencil and paper, you'd start with, you know, a white piece of paper and you'd have the outline of your shape and then you have to slowly build up the darks around it and kind of leave the lighter areas alone uh, as, as negative space. So that would look a little something more along the lines of, of that. That's a really, really terrible example, but I think you get the, uh, I think you get the idea. Uh, and one of the, the cool things about, um, the different the different shapes and the different forms is that when you have them arranged in a certain way well like this is all kind of leading into the next element which is contrast so there's really two ways to to build contrast as far as I know um, and this is only when you're working in black and white this isn't concerning color which is color is its own beast and and that's going to require its own its own stream um, but the way you build up contrast is, is between light and dark, so you build it up with values, but you can also build it up with shapes. So having rounder shapes next to uh, flat or hard edge shapes can, you know, create visual, because the thing, contrast is, is also sometimes called visual interest, and you want to build up visual interest in areas of, a drawing or a piece where you want the viewer's eye to go. So a little example of that is, this is a, a, a scan of a doodle from my sketchbook from sometime last year, where I started out just doing a simple sphere, but I wanted to play around with adding contrast through shapes. So I started drawing in these kind of like crystal structures growing out of the sphere and like immediately like even without all of the added value that I put in that immediately builds contrast and it immediately builds visual interest and it's a really really not easy but it's a it's a readily available way to to make your pieces more visually interesting Uh, contrast can also af can also uh, affect perspective uh, of the perspective of your pieces. So, like, say for something like uh, this cylinder, you have the you you have the flat surface on the top, which is kind of getting a more even amount of light. But on the curved surface, because there's only so much of the curved surface that the light can reach, it slowly gets darker as it goes around to the other side. Um, so it can only hit it at, at this area here, and going outwards, it's only going to get darker in both directions. So the trouble with light is you, you kind of have to really you have to practice and experiment with it. It's it's best to start by drawing, um, by drawing things in real life. So you can just like get anything like a cup or a glass and get a desk light 
and shine it on it in different ways to see the way uh, light bounces and curves off of that curved surface in the different ways. And it's a handy way of doing things. Uh, next up. Okay, shape breakdown. This is gonna this is a good one. So shape breakdown is is <clears throat> the process of turning um, complicated shapes into simpler ones. So here's a study I did of a hand a little while ago. Uh, I don't remember exactly when it was. Now hands people a uh, lots of artists even like a veteran artist, even even me, uh, even people as good at art as me, have uh, difficulty with hands because they're such compound shapes, and they can be posed and formed in so many different ways that they're kind of always a challenge, no matter how often you do them. But the best way to approach drawing hands is to break it down into simpler shapes. So some people like to use the, the circle approach for the palm of the hand, and then they just kind of draw the bones of the fingers out and then build the anatomy on top of those. That's one way of, that's one way of doing it. I another way of doing it is people instead of a, a circle they'll use like a square a box shape which is a which is a bit better than using a circle but for me my personal way of doing it is you draw kind of kind of a lopsided pentagon you can see that kind of better represents the shape of the hand. It's this weird screwy pentagon. And then next in, you wouldn't go for the fingers first. Next you generally add the thumb. And the thing about the thumb is that it has this padded area. Because if you look at your hand, just below your thumb, there's, there's that thick part of your hand that's padded with extra muscle which I kind of like to think of it as the shape of a chicken drumstick. So it's like, you, it's like there's a chicken drumstick attached to your hand. Like that. And then adding the fingers is relatively simple. Um, you can further break the fingers down into sections at the, uh, at the joints. take away the hand that's kind of a good representation of how you would get the general shape of a hand and if you follow the pentagon technique you really can't go wrong I think it's the best way of, of learning how to do hands properly um, you still need to practice a hell of a lot to get hands right because they're such incredibly difficult things especially if you're drawing them say at the side so let's say where you can't draw the pentagon technique so let's say I want to draw so I'm looking at my own hand while I'm drawing this so I want to so I'm just drawing this from life and that's one of the handy things <laughs> get it handy things is that you have you don't have to go looking for reference to draw hands because you have you you are your own reference and you it's always readily available to you and you can just look at it whenever you want and learn how to do it something like that where you can't really use the pentagon technique um, but I'm still breaking it down into the shape of the palm or the meat of the hand and then adding on the thumb and the fingers separately 
Um, and once you do that, they become quite a bit more manageable, a bit more easier. The hardest things I would say would be foreshortening, where you're drawing the hand, say if you're drawing it as though it's coming at you. So I'm just looking at my own hand now, trying to do this. something like that there see already I'm having trouble with this one because foreshortening for extreme perspective as it's sometimes called is is quite the thing to really get to to grips with um, it requires really a, a lot of practice and I don't think I get nearly enough practice with it if I'm honest I don't really challenge myself enough with it but you can that's the great thing you can do it anywhere anytime you want something a little bit like that or if the hand's going away from you you would do something like actually no I'm going to do the Very, very difficult to do foreshortening and extreme perspective, but and I haven't done that one particularly in quite a while. But with enough practice, anybody can get it. I'd say, like, really, it is something you you kind of need to do every day. And I do encourage people to draw every day, even though I don't <laughs> always do it myself, because it can be really, really difficult to you know kind of force yourself to to draw every day or or to stick to that kind of a a schedule but one of the best ways i would say maybe the best way or or the way that's most promoted uh for improving your drawing is life drawing now you can do life drawing um, at a class. Like there's plenty. Like no matter where you live, there's in your local city. There's probably a life drawing class somewhere, and they're usually not that expensive to go to. Like some I've seen life drawing classes here in Dublin that would maybe be like two fifty to five euro to sit it on, and you just it's it's as simple as you just show up with your sketchbook and the model is there they're all ready and you just draw and you can sit and do that for an hour or two and that's really a handy thing to do um so as part of of this class i thought it might be handy for us to do a life drawing session of our own and the way we're going to do this if i just switch the scene here we go so here's my traditional drawing setup uh, I'm just quickly before we get into the actual life drawing I'm going to talk a little quickly about what I like to use for my uh, traditional drawing so this would be the normal layout of stuff that I would use just one sec I just need to adjust my screen there we go okay 
So this would be the 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 normal things that I would take that I would generally use for traditional drawing. Um, mostly I will use this, which is a, a Bic 0.7 millimeter mechanical pencil. I prefer mechanical pencils to traditional or wooden pencils because let's see if I can. So you see the the nib. The handy thing is you never have to sharpen it and the nib always stays at a consistent size and width so you you have that extra level of control and it's not like you constantly have to resharpen uh, your pencil to a point and you're not kind of fighting with it in a sense and a lot more time uh, is wasted so if I is so when I'm when I'm normally sketching I'll use this to do the base drawing and let me actually pull up an example of a sketch so we'll see what I have here in my sketchbook oh quick word about sketchbooks as well so the type of sketchbook that I use is I use a very heavy paper for my sketchbook, I use a 90, uh, paper density or width is, is measured in pounds, and I use a 90 pound paper thereabouts. It's a bit thicker and it's a little bit more expensive than standard sketchbooks, um, but I, I really like the way it looks. So you can see here with a sketch of a hand I did a little while ago, how there's a lot of a lot of the grain of the paper shows through as a nice texture through the graphite and when you're trying to create certain textures that's really really handy to have because it's almost like the paper does half the work for you and you don't really have to worry yourself with too much uh, time detailing so when I normally sketch I'll do a base sketch and then an initial value pass using the 0.7 millimeter but then I will switch to a 0.3 millimeter pencil so I don't know if this will show on camera but if you can see here the nib on this one is about half the size of this one so that allows me to really get in and do really tiny minute details which I'm a very detail-oriented traditional artist. Um, I don't really like things to be too broad or rough or gestural, kind of like impressionist painters would be. I don't, I don't have anything against people who do like that type of art. It's just really not my thing. I'm a lot more meticulous. So even for something like this, which was just, this was just like a weird throwaway shape that I just scratched out onto the page and then decided to render in. So for something like this, I really like to build up my values really slowly so that I, I don't have, I don't want to go too dark too quickly because then if, I'm, if, if I do and I feel like I want to take away some of that value, um, some of the graphite will already get like smudged into the paper and I won't be able to get it off which if I do I'd usually use one of these two erasers this is just like a, your kind of standard eraser this is actually blue tack now some people like to use these kneaded erasers which are very handy because you can shape them any way you want you can just use them as a normal broad eraser or you could kind of knead them to a fine point so that you can just go in and take out really tiny minute areas of value um, without smudging or disrupting the rest of the drawing. This neat eraser, I got this a little while ago and I don't like it too much, but I find that blue tack actually like does the same job and it even does it a little bit better than most erasers that you'll find in store. And you can save a good bit of money if you just like go out and buy a bit of blue tack as well. So that's what I tend to use. And over here on this 
other side of the screen. This is a website for life drawing, so this would be for people who maybe they can't get out to a life drawing class in their area, or they just don't have the time. Um, it's lineofaction.com, and we're going to be doing a couple of these. So we're going to do, I would say, let's try doing about, let's try five ones. Now we're only going to have 30 seconds to draw these figures. So get out your pencils, get out your paper. You're going to be drawn right along with me. I just need to switch to a different sketchbook for this. Here we go. You're going to be drawn right along with me, so let me know when you're ready and we'll get started. Now you're only going to have 30 seconds to draw the figure when it appears on screen. So you're not trying to get detail, you're not even really trying to get accurate proportion. You just want to get the gesture and the pose right, and you don't want to worry about anything else. It's just about quickly getting it down onto the paper, and then as soon as the 30 seconds are up, it's going to swap to a different image, and uh, you, you move straight onto that. You don't waste any more time. And the good thing about this website is that you don't just have the option to do figure drawing, you can also do hands or, or feet, you can do animals, uh, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. I use it maybe about once or twice a week. It's a great way to get some practice in, um, especially if you're not feeling, if you want to draw but you don't feel that inspired to, to do anything or you can't find any inspiration. Although... Something I, something that I think that was actually, was that, yes, inspiration was, I, oh God, I almost skipped over that. Inspiration is really kind of a, a pet peeve topic for me because I hear an awful lot of artists, and I even use this excuse myself, um, I hear an awful lot of artists who say, oh, I'm not, I can't do a piece because I'm not feeling inspired. And I, I really, really hate that excuse because it seems like such a cop-out because more often than not, inspiration doesn't just come to you. You can't just wait for it and hope that it'll arrive. Instead, it's something that you have to force in a sense, um, or at the very least, you have to go looking for it. Um, something that really helps me when I'm not feeling all that inspired is just to you know draw whatever I'm feeling um, and like there have been times where drawing what I'm feeling has really <laughs> been a, a massive massive help to you know whatever I was going through at the time so I think I have an example here on one of these layers yes so this is a piece I did last year called Bogged Down. I initially did it as a drawing and then it actually later went on to become a sculpture. And this piece simply came out of what I was feeling at that time. Uh, I wasn't in a particularly good place, let's say that. And you know when you're, you're feeling quite down how it feels like you're moving through molasses, right? It, it's like even just getting out of bed and doing the most basic of tasks feels like you're doing it while carrying a hundred pounds and you, you just don't know how you're going to get through the goddamn day. Well, that's how I felt at that time. And I felt like the only thing that I had going for me that was, that even looked like it had any hope of working out well was my artwork. And so that's, so I just, you know, just drew exactly that in quite a literal, in quite a literal way. And something that I sometimes struggle with is I'll have an idea for a drawing like this and I'll feel like the interpretation 
of the drawing or the message behind it is a little too obvious and a little too on the nose. But all I can say is that just because the meaning of a piece is obvious to you doesn't always mean it'll be obvious to anyone else. And even if it is, you should probably draw it anyway, because uh, I think honest work um, is is better than doing uh, pretentious or or needlessly broad or complicated work. I think if you want your your art to be nothing else, you want it to be honest. Um, something which really should be helpful for any area of your life. So going to switch back to this. Just going to I'm going to just pause the stream real quick. I'll give you a chance to get ready. Uh, I just need to pop over to the bathroom real quick and then I'll be right back and then we'll get started and we'll do maybe about five or six 30 second figure drawings and uh, we'll see how we are from there. That's what I get for not going to the bathroom before I start a stream. Good job, Connor. Okay. So, assuming that we're all ready, we'll go ahead and get started. So, uh, all of these figures, unfortunately, I, I'm not able to uh, do any nude models, so we're not going to get that depthful into anatomy, because if I do show the nude models, I'll get kicked off Twitch in about a, in about 30 seconds. And I'd really rather not have that. So we're going to go with the only closed one at the moment. So remember, just keep it loose. Don't worry about any details. And also, even though I'm showing myself doing these figure drawings, don't focus on what I'm doing or try to copy uh, my way of doing it. Just focus on the image as it appears on screen and just get it down as best as you can. Okay, let's go. And starting, starting now.
gonna stop it there. Okay, <laughs> that one re that really pushed me uh, to my limit there. I gotta admit, that was pretty tough. Um, so even here, you can see we started out with a really tough one, which is this guy. Already we had some foreshortening with the the leg coming straight at you and the other one coming like out behind. God, that was a tricky one. So you can see straight away, I think maybe 30 seconds um, might have been a bit too short a time to uh, start the initial ones. But you can see um, even like after you do your first two, there should be some kind of more general or broad improvement. You'll find yourself getting uh, exponentially faster and faster and faster. The more you go, the more you're able to, to develop it. And that last one, oh man, that was... <laughs> that one really threw me for a loop, I gotta say. But again, it doesn't matter if you don't get the proportions right, at least not at first. You're just trying to get the general, uh, the shape and the gesture across. And once you're able to do that, you'll find everything else sort of like picks up by itself. So let's try, how many did we get done in that one? Two, three, four, five, six. Let's try a couple of 60 second ones or is 60 seconds too short do you want to go for okay 60 seconds or two minutes which one will we go for 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 two minute ones so two minutes lined up we'll go over to a fresh sheet of paper and go
stop it there. I'm feeling a lot better about uh, those ones actually, except of course for this guy who I went a bit too slow uh, and he didn't get legs in the end, but I think two minutes is, is kind of a, a good starting mark. It was certainly markedly better than the ones we did before. Uh, I especially liked the woman with the red hair in the dress at the end. Uh, and also this person here who had, I think she had kind of purplish hair and she had, it wasn't quite like a crop top, but I think it was just like a tank top that she was probably like pulling up at the front. That one I felt really, really good about. Uh, the weird ninja guy. This one I didn't like at all because look how long that arm is. That arm is probably like just as long as her body. <laughs> I kind of screwed that one up. Uh, if that were more correct, more anatomically correct, that would only go to like there, maybe at a stretch. But yeah, that was kind. <laughs> that was a bit more of a fun one. Um, I'm curious to know how you did now. I wish I could. I wish I could see. I wish there was. This was more of a, a Google Hangouts than. Um, than Twitch, but we'll we'll see. Maybe uh, there'll be room for like multi people stream, multi guest streams in the future. Who knows? Let me just take a drink. Okay. Uh, after that, I'm thinking maybe go for. Uh, a five minute one and we'll see how that goes again go to new page five minute one should uh, we'll do maybe one or two five minute ones and then might do a ten minute one to finish it off and that might uh, that might be of a good way to finish it off. I'm feeling good though. I feel like I got some, some actual decent drawing practice done, which is uh, more than I can say I get done on most days. Some days I get too used to doing things that I'm that I'm used to doing. It's like I'm just doing the same thing over and over because it feels safe and familiar and I don't really push myself to do things that I know I should be doing. Um, so this is one of those things, and I'm feeling quite good about it, actually. So, five minute drawing starting now.
Ooh, this will be a tricky one. Scissor hands type character going on here. So you see I'll often start head off with a circle and just kind of build the jawline around it. It really is the, the most efficient way to, to draw heads. It's a handy shorthand technique to, to have. Quite a pointed elbow here. I can't quite make out the other hand, so we're just gonna take some creative li liberties with with that hand pose. But that elbow really comes to a point. Wait, no, 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 no. I see what the hand is doing. Okay, so the hand is holding another sword in the opposite hand. Okay. I didn't see that the first time. So that hand is probably something like that. And then it's got this crazy, all these crazy hairs going everywhere. I think it's dreadlocks. I'm just gonna make a cross to where all of the fac facial features will go. So we're just gonna lock in some rough indications of them. But we're not gonna focus on detail because we only have 30 seconds. Oh, I'm not quite happy with this one. I think I'd made the torso too long and too far away from where the legs are meant to be. And I didn't even bother trying to tackle those boots. Ugh. I really don't like those like really big new rock style boots. 
Okay. So that's that. Not sure how I felt. I really didn't like that last one. The one before I felt a little bit better about, except for the head. I think I made his head a little bit cartoony. That was probably a little bit better. Uh, if that one, they, that one was very tricky. They were both quite tricky because they have both had kind of awkward lighting scenarios. So that guy wasn't lit very brightly. So it took me a while to notice that he had this sash or, or something that he was like kind of pulling over his shoulder. Um, and I didn't know if that was covering the back leg or not because it was so low lit. And... <sighs> This one is just like, it was all in black, all in, in either latex or leather. I couldn't really tell from looking. Um, you could, you could really, it might've been my monitor, but you could really barely make out the pose of this inner arm. And you really kind of had to infer it from this uh, sword that they were holding out uh, like that. I assume that they were holding it like the reversed way rather than like over the hand it seemed a little it seemed to make more sense to me but uh no that was actually kind of, that actually wasn't too bad um I'm, it, i even though i didn't like these a whole lot i like them a hell of a lot better than the 30 second ones i think five minutes is kind of a good happy medium uh for ones to do 10 minutes oh boy uh, I, I feel like I'd probably do better with these in digital than traditional because I haven't done traditional life drawing in quite a while. Um, and also in digital, it's a lot easier to block in the forms because you can you can adjust the size of your brush. So you can use those really broad strokes to make to fill in the shapes rather than having to create the the outlines of the shapes first. Um, and then kind of block them in slowly um, my pens my pencils kind of taken a little bit of a beating from that but I'm enjoying it we might do one 10 minute one um, and then I think that might be a good place to finish it off after doing a 10 minute one because the five minute ones um, were already pretty trying but uh, I enjoy I I'm enjoying this so far We'll just go for one 10 minute one and then we'll see how we go and start. Ooh, I think I'm kind of preferring this one already. Okay, so I like to.
five, four, three, two, one. Pencils down. That was a really, really good one. And I'm only just after realizing that mine was off screen for the whole time, but that's probably better because it means you can copy me. Um, yeah, no, I felt really, really good about that one. Um, I had a lot of fun, probably because she was in a very useful lighting scenario. Um, it was a lot easier to make out. I, we had plenty of time to not put in facial features, but at least give the impression, mark out the general area of the facial features. Um, a lot more time to get the gesture of the hands a little more correct. Uh, you know, block in some, some basic areas of shading, get some detail on the, the costume that she was wearing. That was actually a really, really good one. Feeling very good <laughs> about that. Um, so that can show you just how handy life drawing can be. Um, like even just a 10 minute drawing every day uh, can do a world of difference. And so I might do more. I'm actually thinking now, I was thinking in the middle of doing that last one. I would be into doing life drawing sessions um, as their own streams, like separate from the normal streams that I do. I'd be completely into doing that um, probably once a week as well as this. So I'd be streaming twice a week because I've been thinking about streaming twice a week, but I, I wasn't sure about did I want to make it the same or, or different from what my usual more free form art streams are. Um, so life, so hosting life drawing sessions might be a handy thing to do. Um, so yeah, no, I'm actually feeling really good about that. What time are we at now? Okay, so we're just coming up on an hour and a half. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. I hope you come back next week. Next week we'll probably be, do, be doing an indoor environment painting. Um, or else I might uh, do some hands. I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet. We'll see how it goes. So, thanks a lot for coming. Really enjoyed having you here. Hope you come back uh, next week. I'll talk to you later. Bye, guys.